Okay, so then in this video I'm going to look at three different things. I'm going to look at EMF and internal resistance and how they affect circuits. And then the other thing I'm going to look at is different types of error. So looking at different types of errors and examples of them in circuitry. Okay, so first of all, EMF and terminal voltage. So, so far we've assumed all of the cells or power sources we are using don't have any internal resistance, so they deliver their full EMF to the circuit. Whereas in practice, this is exactly not the case, that's not what happens. There are always losses inside a battery, and that's called internal resistance. So, there's a few symbols that are going to be used from now on, so I thought I'd clear those up. So, this symbol here is the symbol for EMF. When we're dealing with EMF, the V symbol stands for terminal voltage. So if you connect a, a voltmeter or some other meter to the battery, you actually measure the terminal voltage. Um, I stands for current as usual. You'll see this little r, which is internal resistance. And you see big R, which is an external resistance. Okay, so those symbols are going to be the one we used in the equations from now on. And we're going to look at explaining what is actually happening with a battery so we can start to take account of any errors being induced by the internal resistance. Okay. So... If you have a simple circuit like this, so we've got a battery, which we can see here, so this whole setup here is one of your batteries. We connected it to an external resistance, and this resistor here is representing the internal resistance. So this voltmeter is connected to the terminals of your battery where you normally plug things into your battery. So this is inside the battery. And then this cell is supplying the EMF of the battery. So using Kirchhoff's voltage law in a series, so the sum of potential difference around a series loop is equal to the sum of the EMF. So the EMF is just the EMF from your power source. So that's there on this side. And the sum of the potential differences, you'll have a potential drop across this resistor here. So that will be I little r, and a potential drop across the big resistor, which will be I big r. And you get this equation, which we use when we're dealing with EMF and internal resistance. So we want to introduce terminal voltage into this. So we think the voltage you'll get on the terminals will be the EMF minus the potential drop across your internal resistor. And then what you can see here is just the rearranged version. Usually equations are rearranged so you don't have minuses in them. So that's why by convention you'll see this form. Um, when you're doing an experiment to measure the EMF and internal resistance, you'll have, an, a, again, another rearranged form of this. Um, but you'll see that when you come to do the practical based on it. Okay, so that's internal resistance, EMF, and terminal voltage. And you'll notice I'm using the word voltage here because we're talking about a power supply. So this is the appropriate time to talk about voltage, whereas... If we're talking about potential drops or potential differences across here, voltage would not be appropriate to talk about with resistors. Okay, so we've met a couple of errors before when I'm in these videos. So we've looked at the heating effect, so how the resistance can be increased for various components if the temperature is increased due to current, and we've just met internal resistance. But speaking a bit more generally about the types of error you'll come across, there are two types. We have random errors and we have systematic errors. So a random error is one where there's no predictable pattern in the error. There's no way of knowing exactly what the error was in your measurement. And so that's a random error. Whereas a systematic error is when there's a predictable or a known error in your readings. So internal resistance is an example of that because... It can be measured by doing a practical, which uh, you're highly likely to be doing, and then you can account for it in all your calculations because you know what it is. Whereas heating effect is a random because you can't measure 
the effect of it and you you're never exactly sure what the change has been so that's a random type error and since i've talked about systematic errors i think i might as well talk about calibration here so when you calibrate an instrument what you're doing is you're taking account of the fact that you know there's already errors so what you can do is you can subtract the error or add the error depending on how the error worked to your reading to get the real value without the systematic error in it and that's called calibration. So let's have a look at some other types of circuitry errors and more general errors. So another more general type of error this is called zero error so this is a specific type of systematic error so what it is is when you have a measuring instrument that reads a non-zero value so like 20 volts or something when it's supposed to be reading zero volts and the time you might come across this is if you're into like cooking or baking and that kind of thing where you have scales where there's nothing on it but it's reading 200 grams so what you do is you adjust it back to zero so you calibrate it so that's another type of error you'll come across and that is often an error you might come across in circuitry where you've got an ammeter or a voltmeter that's not reading zero when it should be and that's a common problem you'll come across another common type of error you'll come across is terminal resistance so when you use the wires or crocodile clips or breadboards or wherever you're connecting up your circuitry there are always contacts between various components and these contacts are never perfect so there's usually an air gap between the two pieces of metal and that means there is a resistance to the current flow from that uh, which means some potential difference is lost and that's called terminal resistance so you can model it as being another resistor in your circuit um, but the problem is that whenever you're changing contacts, because obviously we're constantly clipping and unclipping crocodile clips, taking components and putting them out, we're never exactly sure what the contact is like. Sometimes we'll get better contacts, sometimes worse. So it's a random type error, but it's something you'll get whatever kind of circuit you're doing. Whereas here, where I was talking about zero error with your ammeter or voltmeter, that's a systematic error because it will be in the same in all of your results. They'll all be off by, I don't know, 0.02 volts or whatever. So we've got two more errors that you'll need to be aware of when we're dealing with circuits, though there's not particularly much you can do about them. You can check for zero error with your measuring instruments if you have the right materials, but there's not a lot you can do about terminal resistance apart from buying better equipment realistically.